Hey guys, it's Danny. Today it is time to pot up some baby African violets. Late this summer, I ordered some leaves from eBay, I propagated them in water, and at some point, it was time for them to be potted in soil. I have a video all about that, I'll share it down below in the description and also on an info card in the upper right corner of your screen, it will always be there. So if you missed those parts, maybe you want to check them out after this video. Today though, the babies have grown so, so much. Let me just show you. Look at that. I am actually slightly late. It's okay. You can see this one is already super big. They're perfectly fine, but quite crowded. So it is time to separate individual plantlets, plant them in their own little cups. I will take you along. So with that said, let's just get to work. So let's start with this one since the plantlets are quite large. This is Ellie South Knight. These are Russian or Ukrainian hybrids, so this is an English translation. The original name, obviously, it's not in English, but this is how it would be translated. And all of these violets should be beautiful. I think I can see three individual crowns here, but we will see when we're gonna divide them. A little note before we start, I personally prefer to propagate leaves in water. I like to see the roots grow. I find that I have quite big success rate in comparison to soil. But leaves can also be propagated by directly putting them in the soil. And many people do that, especially people who propagate uh, violets to sell them, because it doesn't involve as many steps. Since I'm not a seller, I just propagate them for my own little hobby. I do opt for the water propagation technique, but it does involve more steps, it's not space saving, so that's the difference. And that's why you see some people propagate direct in soil, plus some people just prefer it that way. That's absolutely fine, violets can be propagated in both ways very successfully. And these were started in water. The mixture that I'm gonna use is not a African violet specific type of soil. I bought a peat based type of soil and mixed it with perlite and vermiculite. Ratios are two parts soil, two parts perlite, one part vermiculite. Since vermiculite is not a very popular soil amendment in my area, I just bought it off eBay to try it out. I find that it doesn't necessarily do any difference. My typical mix involves only soil and perlite and that works just great. So if you don't have vermiculite in your area either, then don't feel you need to use it. I'm just using up the bag that I bought. As pots, I won't actually be using pots, but these coffee cups, in some parts of the world you call them solo cups. And what I will do is make some drainage on the bottom using a little blade. One is enough, so I will do this with all of the cups. You'll see each individual leaf has multiple baby plants, which I'm not gonna keep all of them, obviously, I will be giving them away. And whoever ends up owning them can decide what type of pots they prefer best for their African violet. As you might know, I really like self-watering pots. Again, you'll have some links down below in the description and in the info card, but not everybody uses self-watering pots. In some climates, they're really not needed. All right, so I made four little pots here. I don't know if I'm gonna have four baby plants, but let's see. All right, so I moved it to the side a little and let's see what we have here. So first of all, I will unpot everything. I will not try to separate the plantlets while the mother leaf is still potted. So let's see what we have here. Quite a lot of roots. And as you can see, this soil is just perlite and peat moss and it was absolutely fine. In this case, the ratio is half soil, half perlite. So. I will remove quite a bit of the soil just so I better see what I'm doing here. And at this point, I think I can see the individual plants. So first of all, this is the mother leaf, which I can remove at this point. And if I so desire, I can place it in water again and chances are that it will sprout baby plants once again. I just need to make a new cut and I'll show you in a second, but let's see what we have here. So if we look from above, we can see that we have, let's not dirty it, one crown here. Do you see the tiny little leaves in the middle? One crown there, possibly another crown here. I'm not necessarily interested in all of them, but I'm hoping to separate in good condition as many as I can. So let's see where a natural separation point will be. We can totally separate this one and very, very gently I'll try to pry them apart. There we go. One leaf fell, but that is okay. So this is one plantlet and here I think we have two. Let's just see. 
So this is one and this again could be two plants. And yes, as far as I can see, there are two plants here. One is very, very tiny. I will remove it. I'm gonna use this tag to help me. So here's another plant and here is our third plant. These things are incredibly fragile. So losing a few leaves, perfectly fine. You can propagate these little leaves. They will actually sprout. But as I was saying, you can propagate the leaf once again. And the way to do it is to make a fresh cut in an angle like this, place it in water or in soil, however you prefer, and it might actually sprout plantlets once again. I will not do this right now, I have enough plantlets, so I'll clean up my tray and I'll come back to pot the baby plants. So I will pot each of the plantlets in its separate little cup and I'll put some medium first in the cup and then place my violet inside and place medium around it. I don't need the tray because a lot of medium will fall over the rim of this little cup and I will be making a mess and I'll be wasting medium and that's not funny. So I'm just doing this directly in my little soil tray. And here we have it. No need to compact it super tight, but just enough that it sits. Once the roots will establish, it will be much more secure in its pot, but this will do just fine. Let's pot the other babies as well. You can absolutely use smaller pots or smaller cups than this. It is totally your choice, as I was saying. I have a lot of space still at the moment and I do intend to give these guys away. And until then, I want this medium to retain quite a lot of moisture just so I don't have to water away too frequent. And P.S. I'm not the type of grower who really puts a lot of emphasis on pot size. As you've seen in my previous videos, my violets are potted in quite big pots and this works just fine with my environment. And as we'll see by the end of this video, I don't seem to have any issues with roots, with flowering or anything of the sorts. It simply doesn't make sense to me to worry so much about pot size if you know that in your environment pots simply don't stay wet for too long. In the end, you just have to adapt to your environment. And here are the little plantlets. I will be watering them very well at the sink. And even though I typically prefer to water from below, when I repot violets, I do prefer to wet the soil very well from the top. So whether I go at the sink or use a wash bottle such as this, I will be watering the soil very, very well and then place them under my LED lights together with the other ones. Alrighty, so let's get another one. This wasn't a very, very difficult one. I did encounter some that were just so, so brittle and so tiny. This, I believe, is a standard violet, but the minis, well, they can be a little tricky. Alright, here's one that looks quite a lot tinier than the previous one. This is VAT Amazonka. So again, Let's unpot the whole thing. And you can actually separate baby plants when they're much tinier than the previous one, but I do find that the bigger they are, the easier they are to remove. The problem is if one gets very, very big, it will shade the others so the others will stay rather tiny. So let's try to remove the original leaf and, oh, what I'm doing here is I'm actually already separating the plantlets, do you see? And well, if that's the way it's going, then that's the way it's going. So I'm gonna go with the flow. And here we go. We have the first two baby plantlets separated. It's okay, we're gonna go back to them. This is the third one. And here we have two more. One of them is very, very tiny. One of them is super tiny. Sometimes they will catch, sometimes they won't. It depends. It's not a good idea to leave them together with another baby because you will have to separate them at some point. So here's the little baby plant. You know what? We're gonna pot it in a very, very tiny little container as well and see what happens. Here I see this leaf is not doing so well, so I will remove this and I will also remove this tiny one, which could potentially be the beginning of another baby plant. And in this case, for this little guy, it would be a sucker. And the idea is to separate them individually so that they will not compete with another plant. As I was saying, here we have two of them. And because they're so tiny, I will use this tag and go right in between them. And there we have it. I managed to separate them. I think I broke a leaf on this one. Yeah, it's perfectly fine. 
So from this leaf, we got four babies plus one very tiny one, which I don't know if it will make it. We're gonna pot it, give it a chance, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I thought about it for a bit, and even though I am not running out of space and I don't have all that many violets, it would be a good idea to save a little space, especially with the tiny violets, if I intend to keep all of these plantlets. So for the tiniest violets, I will actually go with these little solo cups. Now, the reason why I intend to keep all of these plantlets and I want to save as many of them as possible is that these violets can sport. This means that the babies can actually have a different looking flower than the parent. I'll link you down below to an article explaining more. Apparently, these Russian or Ukrainian hybrids are very, very likely to sport, and I believe it. I have already two sports. Since I purchased my violets when they were very, very tiny and did not bloom before, the seller had no idea what he was selling me. And in one of the cases, a sport was actually a chimera, which is beautiful. So what I intend to do is save all of these baby plants, hang on to them until they bloom, and see how they look like. I also don't want them to be mislabeled, so if I send them to somebody with a particular label and it turns out it's something else, I wouldn't feel so nice. And also, when you're gifting a plant, isn't it better to have flowers? I think it's nice. But anyway, that's the plan. I want to hold on to these guys, see how they bloom, make sure they're okay, make sure they're not sports, and if they're sports, make sure that they're good-looking sports. These mutations are not always nice, they're not always appealing. All right, so I will continue to separate the plantlets in the following days. There are quite a few of them. So with that said, before I let you go, let's just take a look at my African violets, see how they look like. So up here, things have been going very well. A few more violets have bloomed. First of all, I don't think I showed you this one. This is called Dalmatin. I think it means Dalmatian. And it's pretty clear why. Look at this pattern. It is gorgeous. When I saw pictures with this particular one, I had doubts that my little baby plant will bloom true because it looks to me like it would not bloom true from leaf, but it does, apparently. And I absolutely love it. It doesn't have a super huge flower, as my other ones do, but the color and the pattern is beautiful. In the back there, of course the tag is on the other side. All right, this is DS Shining Bell, and look how gorgeous it is. I think you already know this one. I filmed her when the first bloom opened, but ever since then, more and more blooms have started to open and it looks absolutely gorgeous. These guys, I think you already know, this was the first one to open. It is the freezing rain. And next to it, we have, who are you? This is L.E. Aramis and look how big the flower is. And it's very, alrighty then, one of the flowers self-pollinated. I do see a seed pot forming here. I don't know if it's viable, but we're gonna try to grow them from seeds. As you know, I cross-pollinated some of them. We'll get to those. So this is the bluest one that I have so far. It's not a true blue color. I know it appears that way on camera, but it's more of a bluish purple. And in the back there, we have Gerbera. Look at her. Look how big these flowers are. And it's so light colored that you don't see the details. I think you can see them better now. It has a beautiful flower shape and the flowers are absolutely huge. When they first open, they're kind of tiny, but then as time passes, they get bigger and bigger as they fully extend. On the lower shelf, we have a few more. First of all, another Chimera. This one I knew it was supposed to be a Chimera. It was more expensive. This is DS Pinka. Here we have Golden Rainbow. I rotated them and the tags are on the other side. I think you already know Princess Aturandot. We have seed pods forming here. Very exciting. This one is Envy of the Gods and it has a beautiful, very soft pink flower with nice green edging. And on this side, I made a little space for the new tray. Here in the back, you weren't able to properly see it. This is Opus 1. Look how pretty she is. I absolutely adore the variegation, both on this one and the one next to it. As for the first sport that I got, which turned out to be a chimera, I played around, I cross-pollinated it, and look at this. We have a seed pod forming here and one here. This one was cross-pollinated with Pewter's Bells, not with Princesa Turandot. I might do another crossing. Not all of my experiments worked. I'm not sure if some of these violets can actually form seed pots. 
Sometimes it happens with very complex hybrids that they cannot form seed pods, they're not viable like that, but they can actually give pollen. And I think I have one of those cases. Anyway, I filmed the entire process, don't worry. When I have more to show, I will put everything together and make an entire video out of it. So that is about it for today, down below in the description and of course in the info card you'll have more African Violet videos and I'll share with you how these used to look like, they were very tiny, after a very long transport they didn't look so great, but look at them now, they're doing so fantastic. And they really complement well the orchids, because the orchids are not in bloom as long and as often as these guys are, so I do enjoy the flowers a lot whenever my orchids are not in bloom. Alrighty, so with that said, you know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As, African Violet videos and other fun plant-related subjects. And if you wish to support the channel, do consider visiting the merch store down below. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!